Welcome Brookings Bio students, this is Mrs. Rydell, and today we're going to look at another kind of uh, Punnett square, and it involves uh, looking at more than one gene at a time, what we call a dihybrid cross. If you remember when Mendel did his P experiments, um, he was making crosses, looking at different traits, and trying to see how those traits are passed on to offspring. And he didn't just look at one trait at a time. He also did experiments looking at several traits at one time. Does the, um, the gene that determines if a seed is round or wrinkled have anything to do with a gene that determines seed shape? If you are yellow, do you also have to be round? Or could a yellow seed also be a wrinkly seed? And so he started uh, making combinations looking at more than one gene at a time. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to look at how genes are transferred, not just one at a time, but remember you have 46 chromosomes with thousands of genes. And so um, we're going to uh, do a two-gene cross called a dihybrid cross today. And so we need a little bigger Punnett square. We're going to use a 16-box Punnett instead of a uh, four-box Punnett because we're going to get some more combinations, more possible combinations for our offspring. So if you made a cross, for example, between two round yellow parents, they looked round and yellow, that's their phenotype, and the genotype was um, heterozygous for both of the genes, the gene that gave, gives them their seed shape and their seed color, what you would see is you get some different combinations in your offspring. You're going to get some that show both dominant traits, round and yellow. You're going to get some that show dominant for one trait, um, for example, round, but green for their color. You're going to get some that show the uh, recessive for seed shape, but uh, dominant for the color, wrinkly and um, yellow. And you're going to get some that are uh, recessive for both traits. And so when we do a, a dihybrid cross, we're going to start to see some more combinations because those two uh, genes that code for seed shape and seed color are carried on different chromosomes. So they don't always go together in the same uh, organism. So we're going to make a dihybrid cross. We're going to cross, for example, a homozygous a yellow round organism with a homozygous green wrinkly. One that's dominant for both um, uh, genes, has dominant allele choices for both genes, and one that's recessive um, allele choices for both genes. So let's make a cross. We're going to cross a homozygous yellow round parent with a homozygous green wrinkly parent. The homozygous yellow round parent is dominant for both genes, has dominant alleles for both of its genes. And the homozygous wrinkly uh, parent is going to have, be uh, homozygous for um, recessive, uh, for the recessive choices. So let's make our rules. First we figure out what the parent alleles are. In the case of homozygous yellow and round, we're going to use capital letters to stand for the dominant choices. It's going to be big R, big R for round, big Y, big Y for yellow. Can you put Ys first? Yes. Um, you could say big Y, big Y, big R, um, big R. And now my homozygous green, remember green is recessive to yellow, so we're going to use the little letters. And we're going to use little uh, recessive uh, alleles for our wrinkly choices little r, little r, little y, little y. Okay, then we pick our correct size punnet. In this case, we're looking at two genes at the same time. Si, uh, for we're looking at shape and color. So we need a bigger punnet. We're going to use a 16 box punnet. But the uh, rules work the same way. We put in our uh, possible parent gametes. We make the combinations in the boxes. And then we look and count. What are the probabilities of getting the different phenotypes and genotypes? So the next part is figuring out the parent gametes. Remember now, when these parents make um, gametes, those homologous chromosomes are going to sort um, 
independently into the uh, sperm or egg cells. So if you look, I have, here's my first pair of homologous uh, chromosomes, the brown and red ones. These are homologous partners. Now notice they don't have to have the same gene choices, so I made them a little different color. This is my other set of homologous uh, chromosomes, uh, dark green, light green. And when these uh, sort now into their alleles, or excuse me, sort into the gametes, into the sperm and, or eggs when we're doing meiosis, each of those homologous chromosomes now sorts independently. That's that independent assortment. So each offspring is going to get one of these and one of these, but which one goes with which? That's the independent assortment. The brown one could end up with the big green one. The brown one could end up with the uh, a light green one. The red one could end up with the dark green one, or the red one could end up with the light green one. That's the mixing up. And so if these are the chromosomes that are carrying the genes for um, tallness, or seed color, or shape, or um, flower color, those traits now, those characteristics, can mix around in different combinations as we're making gametes. Okay, so let's look at our uh, homozygous round yellow parent. If these are my uh, allele letters, big R, big R, um, big Y, big Y, and I kind of made them different colors so you can see who's going with who. When this parent makes gametes now, it's going to get one R gene, tell it how to, what shape to be, and it's going to get one Y gene to tell it uh, what color to be. But which of those go together with which? That's the independent assortment. So in order to make sure we make all the combinations, don't leave anybody out, don't mix them around or put two of the same, we're going to do a little uh, kind of a um, pattern for picking which combinations go together. Okay? Um, I like to call it doing the Macarena, if you remember a few uh, years ago, there was a, a kind of a dance that was popular that you kind of did the uh, uh, move to the left, move to the right. So we're going to kind of do that. And you do this in math when you're doing uh, putting uh, putting together uh, um, equations. We're going to look at, so I'm going to pick the left choice this time for each of my genes. It's going to get the big uh, R that's red. And I'm going to also pick the left choice for my Y gene. I'm going to put the pink one with the big red one. And that's one possible gene combination. If you look now, the other possible gene combination is if I pick the right choices. Lefts, rights, the blue R could go with the green Y. Middles, blue R could also go with the pink Y, or outsides. The red R could go with the green Y. Notice now in this case, because our parent is homozygous, we really only have the possibility of getting a big R and a big Y. But which of these go together makes for uh, different combinations. And so um, when we get to uh, having heterozygous, making sure that we get all of the possible gamete choices is important. So we're going to kind of follow that pattern when we pick pick um, chromosomes to go into our gametes. Always pick the left ones together, the right ones together, the middles together, and the outsides together. We're going to do the same thing now for our homozygous wrinkled green parent. Remember this was our gene combination two little R's, two little Y's. So when I make gametes, now remember, lefts together, rights together, middles together, little, uh, the blue one could go with the pink one, or outsides together, the red one could go with the green one. Let's practice making gametes now with our uh, with another parent. What if my parent was heterozygous for roundness and yellow? Heterozygous means it's going to be heterozygous for the round gene, 
also heterozygous for the yellow gene. And here would be my gene combination now. Remember, big R, little r for round if it's heterozygous, big Y, little y for color if I'm uh, heterozygous for my color genes. Now, when I do making gametes, we're going to put the left choices together. It's going to get an R and a Y, but this R could go with this Y. Possible combination. The big R could end up in a gamete with the big Y. Writes together, little r could end up with the little y. That's another possibility. Middles, little r could end up with big y. Or the big R outsides. Big R could end up with the little y. Notice now, these are going to make very different looking offspring. Okay? These are going to have both of the dominant alleles. This one gets both of the recessive alleles. These are combinations, and they're going to carry different alleles. They're going to make different looking offspring. Those, each of those sperm or egg cells is going to have a different gene combination. That's the independent assortment. And so let's practice now by making a cross. We're going to use a 16 box punnet now. We'll do a little bigger combination. And we're going to cross our um, homozygous recessive, our wrinkly yellow parent, or excuse me, wrinkly green parent with our dominant round yellow parent. Homozygous dominant for both traits crossed with a homozygous recessive for both traits. Notice now when I put them in together in the boxes, usually we put the two letters together that show uh, that are coding for the same trait. So I put the R's together and I put the Y's together. Could I do it uh, big R, big Y, little R, little Y? Yeah, you could. But it's going to be harder when you go back and look and count and look at probabilities of offspring if the letters are all scrambled around. So it's easier to see what happened if we put the R's together and we put the Y's together. So dad's going to give big R and mom's going to give little r, dad's going to give big Y, mom's going to give little y, and I get this combination. Now look at the offspring. All of these offspring are going to show the dominant trait for shape and the dominant trait for color. They're carrying that dominant allele. Even though those recessive alleles are there, we're not going to see them. 100% of my offspring are going to show this genotype big R, little r, big Y, little y. They're going to be heterozygous. And their phenotype is, now they're going to look round and yellow. Round and yellow. They're going to show both of those characteristics at the same time. OK, let's make a heterozygous cross. We're going to cross two heterozygous round and yellow parents. We'll make the cross. Remember, we put that little X there, so I'm going to make a cross. And here are my parent combinations. Now, if I'm heterozygous for two traits, big R, little r, big Y, little y, and we're going to put those, uh, make, uh, do some making gametes now. Big R can go with the big Y, remember, lefts together, rights together, Little r could go with little y. Middles together. Outsides together. Those are my possible parent gametes. So let's put those into a punnet. We're going to put our, uh, we're going to use a 16 box punnet because we're doing a two gene cross. We're going to put our parent allele choices in. What kind of gametes could those parents make? And remember, we're doing heterozygous. Both parents are heterozygous. So we got some different common. OK, I'm going to have you fill in the boxes. Remember, if we put the letters together um, so I can go back at the end and look and count and see, it's easier if you have both of the R letters together and both of the Y letters together. So big R from uh, one parent, uh, big R from this parent, I'm going to get a big R, big R. Big Y, little Y, or excuse me, big Y, big Y, I'm going to get a 
big R, big R, big Y, big Y offspring. If you go through, take a minute, we're going to stop the, uh, stop the video for a second, and I'm going to have you fill in your boxes. Okay, welcome back. You should have filled in the boxes now, and we're going to look and count and see what happened. We're going to look at our little punnet here and see um, how many offspring we get in this cross that are going to be round and yellow. Round, we're going to have to have at least one big R to be round. Okay? And we're going to have to have at least one big Y to be yellow. Does it matter what this second spot is? to be round. Remember, as long as you have one dominant allele, that's the one that's going to show. So big R, big R could be round, or big R, little r is also going to be round. So we're looking for offspring that are going to be at least one big R, and also at least one big Y. Remember, it doesn't really matter what the second choice. It could be little Y, it could be big Y, and I'm still going to be yellow. So I want you to take a marker we're going to go through and I want you to circle which ones of the offspring have one big R, at least one big R, and at least one big Y. They could have two. They just need one to be to show the dominant trait. And depending on how you set up your punnet here now, you may have them uh, kind of arranged in different places in your boxes, but I want you to go through and color in all the ones that show both round and yellow uh, phenotype. And if you look, you can see these are the ones I got them colored blue here in my boxes. At least one big R and at least one big Y. At least one big R and at least one big Y. We're going to color those or circle them all the same color. And then we're going to do the same thing. Let's go through and let, well, let's do this. Let's count. I want to count. If you count up how many are there, I have nine of my offspring are going to show the round and yellow trait together at the same time. Okay, let's do round and green now. In order to be round, I'm going to need at least one big R. What genotype do I need to show the green trait? Remember, green is recessive and it only shows if you have both alleles. So in order to be green, you have to be little y, little y. So I want you to look now at your boxes, and we're going to pick a different color. And I want you to circle and color the boxes that show offspring that are going to have a big R, one big R, to show the round trait, and two little y's to show the recessive trait. Does it matter on this one what the second letter is? Remember, it could be big R, big R would be round, or big R, little r would also be round. So look at your boxes, and I want you to circle. We're going to circle all the ones that are going to look round and green. If it takes you a second, you can pause the video and then restart. And we're going to look, and if you look on mine now here, here's big R's, round, and two little Y's. This one's going to be round with two little Y's. This one's going to be round with two little Y's. I see one, two, three. There are going to be three of them that are round and green. Let's look at our next combination. The other combination we could get is to be wrinkly. That's going to be two little R's but yellow, big Y. And it doesn't really matter what this second allele is here, because as long as I have one big Y, I'm going to look yellow. So pick a new color, and let's circle all of the offspring that are going to be wrinkly and yellow. In this case now, here's my two little R's, big Y, two little R's and a big Y. These three here are going to show the wrinkled yellow characteristic. One, two, there's going to be three. And now that leaves one little guy left here in this corner box. This offspring is going to show recessive for both of the traits. 
little r little r little y little y it's going to look uh it's going to look uh, green and it's going to look wrinkly there's only one this pattern remember i said pennants are all about patterns this pattern is the sign of a heterozygous two gene a dihybrid cross it always sees that same nine to three to three to one pattern ratio in the offspring it's a sign that both parents are heterozygous for the two traits that you're looking for for the two genes it's a dihybrid and the parents are heterozygous anytime you see a 9331 that's a clue of what the parent genotypes are so let's look to see which um, how this 9331 pattern works because it's not going to always be um, uh, come out in in order like this and so if you look now look at the look at the ones that are the nines what do you notice about the traits that they show are they dominant or are they recessive the ones that have the nine are dominant for both characteristics for both traits they're round that's the dominant trait for uh, seed shape and they're yellow that's the dominant color so when i do a dihybrid cross and i see nine offspring that are uh, nine of the 16 are going to be dominant for both traits they're going to be dominant for trait one they're going to show the dominant characteristics for trait two if you look at the ones that are the threes i'm going to back up a little bit look at the ones that are the threes the threes now are dominant for one characteristic round for example or yellow for example and recessive for the other characteristic green and wrinkled are the recessive choices so the ones that show up as threes three out of 16 boxes are going to be dominant for one and recessive or recessive dominant look at your little one here the number the, the one out of 16 gets both recessive traits so there's a pattern here there's a pattern the nines are going to show dominant for both traits. The threes are going to show dominant for the first trait and recessive for the second trait. Or the flip, recessive for trait one, dominant for trait two. And then the one out of 16, one out of 16 offspring is going to be recessive for both traits. That 9331 ratio is a clue that your parents are heterozygous and you're looking at two genes at once. We're going to practice making gametes now because the, remember the hard part of setting up a cross is to get the parent parents figured out and make the gametes. So what are my possible gametes here? We're going to we're going to look at a parent and then make some gametes. If I had a pure round parent, right, and a pure, t both pure and round and pure and tall, it's got two characteristics now. Pure and round, remember pure means homozygous, two of the same. These are my genes that my parents would have. Two of the same for roundness, two of the same for tallness. Now when I make gametes, remember, lefts together, rights together, they, uh, the red R could go with the green key. Middles, outsides. Notice if you're homozygous, you really only have um, one possible culmination to give to the kids. You want to get one uh, dominant R, you're going to get one dominant T. What if I'm heterozygous, but I'm pure for my roundness? heterozygous for tall heterozygous means i have to have a big t little t combination but i could be pure or homozygous for my round genes i could make some different combinations now this big purple t could end up with the, the, the blue r that's one combination okay. little t could end up with this big r that's one combination my centers together middles together little t could go with the blue r or 
big purple tea could go with the big green arm. Notice now, if you're not homozygous, you start to see some different possible combinations in your gametes. Because of that independent assortment, this parent can make some different looking uh, genes or uh, sperms or eggs. Okay, let's try a hybrid tall with a pure wrinkly. Remember, hybrid means the same as heterozygous. I'm going to be big T, little t, pure and wrinkly. Uh, if I'm pure for that wrinkle trait, two little R's. That's the wrinkly recessive allele. And if pure tells me, i got to have two of those. Okay, let's make some gametes. Lefts together, rights together, middles together, outsides together. Notice all of my offspring now are not going to uh, get the same gene combination. Okay, let's try a heterozygous tall and hybrid round. Have both of those traits. Heterozygous tall, I'm going to have big T, little t. And hybrid means the same as heterozygous. I'm going to have big R, little r for my round combination. And now we're going to make gametes. Lefts together, rights together, middles together, outsides together. Those are what's, uh, those are the gametes that are going to go into my Punnett square now. I think you're ready. We're going to uh, try practicing with some two gene cross Punnets. Thanks for listening.